So what we're going to look at now are a few theories and ideas that are common to all types of chromatography. Now, chromatography is a bit of a new idea, but basically all it's about is chromatography is all about the separation of substances in a mixture. So if we have some sort of uh, mixture of you know a few different a few different things, we use chromatography to separate these, so we can so we can sort of analyze them. Uh, in different ways. So the separation of substances in a mixture. Now there are lots and lots of different types of chromatography and different types have different purposes. Some some types of chromatography uh, allow us to just separate separate all the substances so we can actually look at and then analyze them individually. Some of the and others just allow us quite a quite a vague overall understanding of what may be in a mixture. And so we're not going to look at that right now. All we're going to look at is, a, is a, as I said, a few sort of core ideas. <laughs> now, something that's very key to chromatography is the idea of phases. <clears throat> now, all chromatography processes have what's called a stationary phase and a mobile phase. Now, basically, these are the word phase doesn't doesn't mean that much here. It's more about the idea of stationary and mobile. So the station, so in in chromatography, basically, mobile phase is kind of like a solvent. We kind of dissolve our mixture in a solvent or in the mobile phase. So we can kind of say it's like a solvent. We dissolve our mixture up here in the mobile phase, and then. And then what we do is we pass this, this solution, this solution containing the mixture in the mobile phase, along or through or next to some sort of some sort of a stationary phase. And so here in this example, we can say that we've got you know a beaker full of, uh, of dark blue ink and we've dipped a bit of chalk into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this chalk out and we're going to put it into a beaker containing water. So we've, we've soaked it in ink a little bit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put it in another beaker containing water. So if we do this, so here's our water. If we do this, so now we're putting our, our chalk in here. Now this, in this case, our, our mixture is our, is our dark blue ink and our solvent is our water. So if we were to actually if we were to actually conduct this test, then what would happen? So we've got our chalk. It's in the it's in the same position, about the same height. So all this ink soaked into the bottom part of the chalk. Now, if we took this chalk out, didn't dry, and put it into this water, what would happen is that the 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 ink that's in the bottom of the chalk would dissolve in this solution, and it would what it would what would happen is it would slowly creep up the chalk. So if we just were to stick a piece of dry chalk in this water, then the water is actually going to creep up and we might get you know a little bit of water even up to here. So everywhere is going to be wet. The chalk will get wet up to a certain point. This is just sort of a natural process. Now if we do, if there's something dissolved in the water, if we have some blue ink dissolved in the water, then what's going to happen is the, the different components of the ink that are dissolved in the water are also going to climb up the chalk. However, say that let's say there's two different components in the chalk. Let's say there's uh, a little bit green and a little bit of red. Now, what's going to happen is if is if the if, if is if this blue ink is contained of you know some sort of green ink and some sort of red ink, then what's going to happen is that the green well is what's going to happen is that as these this this blue ink is dissolved in the water, it means that this green ink and this red ink is, are also dissolved in the water. And as they climb up, as they climb up the chalk while they're dissolved in the water, they're going to climb up to different heights to one another. So while while here the green and the red ink are sort of mixed together and you can't can't they all just look like one big body of ink. Once we perform chromatography and we soak it and we put it into the water, what's going to happen is the green ink and the red ink, due to their different chemical makeups, are going to climb up the chalk to two different heights. So let's say the water goes up to this height, then maybe the green ink will go up to, let's say, about there, and the red ink will go up to about 
here. So let's say we've 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 soaked it in our in our uh, in our ink. We've put it in here, and we've uh we've 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 let the uh, the ink soak chalk sit in the water for a little while. You know, maybe 15, 20 minutes, and let this let this process happen. And what's happened is the is the blue ink dissolved in the water has sort of uh, stretched out. So now we've got a green bit of green ink that's gone up this far, bit of red ink that's gone up this far, and the water itself has gone all the way up to here. Now in this case, what we have is Let's label the stationary and mobile phase as I've set up here. So here the chalk is the stationary phase and the water is the mobile phase. Now what's happened? The reason behind the separation of the red and the green is their differing affinities for the mobile and the stationary phase. Now this word affinity can be very useful. So affinity basically means that if, if something has a high affinity for something else, it means you know it likes to be around it, it likes to get stuck to it. So if we say that the green ink has a high, so we can say that the green ink has a higher affinity for the chalk than the red ink. Uh, sorry, a higher affinity for the water than the red ink because the water, it, the water, uh, the green ink allows itself to be carried up the chalk uh, in in the water while it's dissolved in the water further than the red ink does. Basically, the red ink has a higher affinity for the stationary phase and gets more stuck to the chalk, and so the water cannot continue to pull it up. So what happens when this process occurs is that basically uh, the green ink and the red ink are what we call adsorbed and desorbed. So adsorb, we say that things adsorb onto the stationary phase, and adsorb basically means they stick onto the surface. So things are adsorbed onto the stationary phase, and then once they're up, after they're adsorbed onto the stationary phase, they are desorbed or they come off the surface back into this mobile phase. So basically what's happening here is both the green and the red ink are adsorbing onto the surface of the chalk, they're adsorbing onto the surface of the stationary phase, and then desorbing back into the mobile, va mobile phase or desorbing back into the water. You know, lots and lots and lots of times as they move up the chalk. This, happen this process is happening, you know, over and over and over again. However, the reason for their difference is that uh, the green ink is slightly more attracted to the water, and thus it's it's more likely to be, it's it becomes uh, more thoroughly desorbed back in the mobile phase than it is adsorbed onto the stationary phase. And as a result, if it keeps uh, going in and out of the water as the water climbs up, if it if it spends more of its time in the water than it does on the chalk, then it's going to go f it's going to follow the water further and t and go further up the chalk. On the other hand. The red ink has a higher affinity for the stationary phase. Now what that means is that basically the red ink is more attracted to the stationary phase than the green ink. And that means that uh, when when the red ink is adsorbed onto the surface of the chalk, you know, the, the attraction between uh, the red ink and the chalk is greater than the attraction between the red ink and the water. And for that reason, uh, the red ink doesn't, doesn't climb as far up the chalk. It spends more time adsorbed onto the surface of the mobile of the stationary phase than it spends desorbing into the mobile phase, and for that reason, it doesn't go as far up the chalk. And so these these are sort of some key terms. Stationary and mobile phase are very important. We need to be able to identify the stationary phase and the mobile phase in all chroma chromatography processes. And this idea of adsorbing onto the stationary phase or sticking onto the surface of the stationary phase and desorbing back into the mobile phase. Another way you could put this is coming or sort of peeling off the surface of something and then dissolving back into the mobile phase is very important. So in this situation, both both the ink colours are adsorbing onto the stationary phase and desorbing into the mobile phase over and over and over again. And depending on their attraction for the mobile phase and for the stationary phase, they've gone up different heights up the chalk. Basically, because the uh, the green ink has a higher attraction for the uh, for the mobile phase and a weaker attraction for the chalk, it's gone further up. The, the water has allowed it to be carried further up the chalk. However, the red ink has a greater attraction for the uh, for the stationary phase and a weaker attraction for the mobile phase than the uh, than the green ink. And thus, it spends less time uh, sort of dissolved in the water and thus gets less of a chance to climb up the chalk. Because what we need to remember here is that it is the water that is allowing the ink to climb up the chalk. So the water is causing the ink to climb. 
and that's why we call it the mobile phase. So the water is causing the ink to climb, and so if the green climbs further than the red, it means it spent more time in the water. That means it likes the water more than the red ink. It's more attracted to the water than the red ink, and thus it, it is caused to, uh, to climb further up the chalk than the red ink. And so that's kind of the basic ideas behind chromatography and how we compare the idea of uh, attraction of different components of a mixture for the stationary phase and for the mobile phase. So here it's very important to realize that water is causing the ink to climb. And thus, if, ink, if the green ink went further up the chalk, it means it is more attracted to the mobile phase has a higher a greater affinity for the mobile phase and thus allows and this allows it to be carried further by the water than the red ink. So these are some basic ideas that are relevant to pretty much all chromatography processes and so a lot of key definitions here that are, are very useful in helping us analyze and understand these these different types of processes.